Is it true that more women than men will follow the Dajjal, and if so, why? Yes, we mentioned uh, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that most of those who follow the Dajjal will be women. I think there are a number of reasons that come in the other hadith for this. One of them is that the, in the hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ talks about the natural deficiencies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made as a test for some of the sis for the sisters the fact that they have a time in the month where they don't pray and that they need to make up for this with sadaqa and that you know subhanallah you know there is a difficulty that Allah has made natural for them it's not a blameworthy pro it's not something blameworthy it's a natural thing that Allah has made for them but they need to make up for it with other things in order that they don't be harmed and likewise, the nature and the, and the, the sort of the, the, the characteristic of the women, you know, with regard to the tongue, with regard to backbiting and slandering, these are things which again lead people into falling into these kind of fitan, falling into these kind of trials and tribulations. So I think it's very, very significant that, you know, that, 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 that there are certain sins that women are predisposed towards, like backbiting and like, uh, you know, gossip and, and slander. <laughs> And that at the end of the day, there's a certain amount of a natural predisposition. And so it's not a criticism of women. It's not for us to say that this is a, you know, that, that, that women are bad or that women are less in, the, in, that, in that regard. But it's simply something they need to be aware of so that they can combat it by giving sadaqah, by be care, being careful about what they say, by being, you know, practicing and by sticking to Islam. But if you look at the hadith that talks about being saved by the Dajjal, they talk about both men and women being saved who believe. So the issue is um, uh, uh, regarding, you know, certain sins that the women do and certain deficiencies that Allah has put in them. The third issue uh, is, this, is the easiness, easiness with which the hearts of the women are attached to, you know, emotional issues. Um, I think uh, one of the, the Arabic poets, he said that indeed their hearts are quick to lean. Their hearts, are, they, their hearts move quickly to a person. You know, they become attached to a person very easily and very quickly. You know, and people sort of having a following around a person and having a big, you know, sort of uh, effort made around a person and, a big, and people's hearts, you know, they go towards them. And this is something which a person has to try to avoid, they have to try to keep their heart, uh, you know, in check and not to simply sort of fall for every guy that they see or to fall for every sort of new uh, sort of celebrity or every new sort of person they hear about because this is from the inclination that will lead to fo following the Dajjal. So there is a certain predisposition with the heart that the heart is easy to, to easier, the heart of the woman is easier to, to sort of be attached to things and to be attached to emotional things and people, seeing your mom and dad alive that you thought were dead and other things like that. And again, this is something that is very easy to deal with. Islam has not said you're condemned. Islam has simply said there are natural things within the men and there are natural things within the women. And the natural things within the women make them vulnerable to certain sins and certain problems. But there are ways to get over those. From the ways to get over those is that the sisters, when they are not praying, they spend their time doing ibadah, other forms of ibadah. And they won't be able to replace the prayer. But they don't make that a time where they don't pray, they don't do dhikr, they don't... Uh, you know, remember Allah, they don't teach anyone, they don't learn anything. This is not the right way. But they fill that time with things which ibadat, which are beneficial. Uh, like the dhikr of Allah, like teaching, like reading, like studying. Even if they can't, perform the prayer. And from the m means to get over this is for them to be careful about their hearts and their tongues, to be careful about them becoming too attached to individuals and to figures and to being sort of, you know, to have tendencies to sort of like every sort of new guy that comes around or every new guy that is sort of reported in the newspapers or whatever. And likewise, to watch the tongue from gossiping and backbiting. Because these are all things that we know are predispositions that a lot of women have. And again, the Sharia doesn't say all women have it but that a lot of women have, and that's perhaps why the majority of the people will be, uh, who will follow the Dajjal will be from the women. And that's just based upon, 
not a clear evidence, but based upon other ahadith that talk about the vulnerability of women in certain areas. And if we put them together, we can say perhaps these vulnerabilities are the reason why the majority of the women will follow the Dajjal. And of course, the Prophet ﷺ advised them to give sadaqah. And this, inshallah, is a means for them to make up for some or to be able to save themselves from some of the natural uh, vulnerabilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put into them.